Good evening, you everyone. We are starting with the today's session, which is, uh, let's say, a practical session to help you to learn, let's say, um, how to connect the dot and easier grasp the concept after you perform the reading to build a chatbot. And the chatbot is going to be on your subject of uh, of choice. We don't suggest what application you want to do. Is That is part of the fun of the assignment. You can do in whatever subject you would like. And we are going to, uh, uh, besides talking about chatbots, we are going to uh, overview the main terminology, which is the base, so you can use the, uh, the tool uh, in your, uh, to make your work uh, more efficient and how to apply this term terminology to build, deploy, and monitor a chatbot application. So besides all this, uh, let's say, um, introductory part based on the uh, main concept of chatbot, even though chatbot has existed for a long time, but the way they have advanced and the way they are in our life in the last couple of years is totally different. So we are going to talk about the advancement where the chatbots stand today, what available tool we have at hand to build chatbot, what are the benefits and how to do this uh, using the services in the, IB uh, in the IBM cloud, the one we are uh, working today. So, um, you remember that we have advanced over web interface, mobile interface, and now we are in the times of the chatbots. They are everywhere. But let's look, I tried to provide a definition where I highlight, uh, highlighting the main component which should be present so we can understand what is the chatbot about. So in order to talk about chatbot, we are referring to some software uh, system which understands the natural language. That is one important part. It understands the, lang uh, the language in certain contexts, can interact with the user. What that means? That means it's going to be a conversation, Q, question and answer. That is the interaction between the, the system chatbot and the user. And very important, in order to maintain this interaction, the chatbot must have certain level of intelligence. That means it's not just to understand the language itself, but understand the language in the context and the intelligence to help solve a certain problem. That's our all key component. At the end of the day, all this capability to understand the language, to interact with the user, to maintain a conversation, are to solve a certain problem. That is the purpose of the chatbot. And I want to point your attention in something which is highlighted here, which is named in certain contexts. That is the today realm of chatbots. Certain contexts, why? We are not talking about chatbots for general purposes that can serve any domain, any application. We are going, we are talking about application bill for certain contexts of knowledge of understanding, not general knowledge. So it's very important. Don't take this as a limitation. This is the state of the, um, the state of the art today of the chatbots. Uh, Sometimes you will refer to the chatbot as a digital uh, agent is the same thing. Sometimes you will see just a bot. What is the difference between bot and chatbot? The, the substantial difference between bot, they are very similar, is that when we refer just to a bot, there is not the component of interacting with the user 
this conversational part doesn't exist. For the bot is enough automatically based on certain condition, on certain rule to, uh, to make a uh, certain thing happen and of course to solve problem. But the solution of the problem is not based on conversation, it's based on certain trigger and rule. For instance, how to buy stock when the, the, the price uh, reaches some level, you buy stock when uh, the price is below that you sell and so on and on and on. It's based on trigger, not on conversation. So we must be aware about all this um, a slight detail, but most importantly, what are the main component of the chatbots? So chatbots are very useful for the businesses because you can apply them almost in any area of our life today. I have selected three very, um, let's say, important um, use cases because um, is the way chatbots are more widely used. Starting with e-commerce, when you want a recommendation of the chatbot to, to buy certain product, like the Sephora use case, or to support customer service. For instance, airline KLM uh, has a messaging chatbot, which will help the user with the flight information, check-in notification, a flight status, and everything which is related with customer service. This is another area of application. Or content delivery like uh, digital content from um, a network like CNN. So in summary, the advancement of the chatbot like anything, uh, let's say in our life, how it, it, it has evolved, in, uh, in technology is customer like something, but this is not enough to have it. We still must have the technology capable to satisfy this need at a reasonable cost. It has to be cost effective. When all these conditions are um, available, then we have the product which customer like and is widely available. The same thing is with the chatbot. Before, we didn't have advancement of the natural language processing, the capability of cognitive um, system, which can provide building a system and train system with certain intelligence. So we didn't have this type of chatbot like uh, the today available chatbot. Moreover, it's not just the technology, is also the price and the cost effectiveness of this, of this technology. Today, all these services of natural language understanding, cognitive application are available in the cloud, very cost effective. There is no need that you uh, companies from the size of Sephora or CNN or KLM. These services today about uh, related with natural language understanding, cognitive application are available as a services in the cloud provided by different provider, very cost effective. The cost effective, you can go for instance in the cloud we are using uh, for services uh, related with uh, AI and cognitive, which is the IBM cloud, and you can see the price of this um, services even though we are using the free version the free version is giving you plenty to do a simple project so the point is uh, all this component i'm talking about the user likes something the technology is ready and cost effective are present so the thing which users so much like it about the messenger in facebook was uh, like the boss of, um, of, of this final um, involvement of uh, the chatbot in all area. Customer like, 
the technology is available at a reasonable price. And the today, today reasonable price, you don't have, you can be just a, a single owner of a company and you can afford this technology to build chatbot for your business. So uh, that is the evolution, that is the stage in which we are and based on the, uh, of course, uh, not only on what you like, but also of the benefits from uh, for the business, which I try to summarize in this slide, related with not only that is improved user experience in customer car care, but also the possibility to integrate different services uh, in order to build more useful application. And of course, the resource saving was the first criteria to make the chatbot so widely useful. As I mentioned, chatbot has evolved. We are in the era of chatbot. We, uh, uh, our previous life was in web uh, interface, mobile interface, and today we live in the chatbot uh, alive. So how they evolve it. Here I have a slide which is from 2016, which can represent what were the expectation from chatbot at that point. And you can see an orange, very repetitive stuff, uh, task and with a uh, lower um, percentage tasks which are more intelligent, let's put it this way. Today, Customer expect all this, which was in blue in 2016. Customer expect this today from any chatbot in order to be accepted as a reasonable and as a good uh, support of the service or customer um, experience. So that is the way uh, chatbot expectation uh, have evolved and they continue evolving since all this technology related with services available in cognitive to make your system more intelligent and to solve the problem more efficient, more close like the human would do, that is the advancement in the chatbot. So in the last slide I'm going to present is the summary of what we talk up to now to understand that the chatbot must have the component, the conversational and the cognitive part. That is the today requirement for chatbot. And um, the conversational part is described with several steps. We are going to use the Watson assistance service in the IBM cloud, to, uh, which is providing you uh, with the capability to build, let's say, simple chatbot for which you don't have to heavily use uh, your previously learned programming skills. So these services are very useful to build simple application. That is what you're going to do in assignment four. I just want to open parenthesis and don't want that you uh, get with uh, not accurate impression. Even though you don't have to use any heavy lifting programming for this type of uh, building uh, chatbot application, but uh, because the software uh, services are available with minim minimum capability, which permit you to build different in different way application. But when you have to go to something more advanced, it's very important that you can integrate several services to build more complex um, a chatbot. In this case, the integration, of course, evol involves some programming. So don't think the program is, programming is uh, completely gone. So this is what I have uh, as a general introduction to what are the chatbot. And I'm ready to give the um, screen to Elena, unless, uh, Linish, do you want to add something? Uh, no, no, this is good. This was good, Elena. Okay. Okay, Elena, now um, you can share your screen, please. I will stop sharing.
Is that okay? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm going to... Oh, wait a minute. I started looking at the slides, but I should be doing... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me click on share. Okay, yeah. sure. Let's see. Okay, screen. All right. Oh, okay. And one more click. All right. So uh, this slide is very important. Uh, some important reminders that you have been repeating all the time. First of all, you make sure that the chatbot is ready two to three days before assignment is due because you'll need to be collecting the conversation data. Uh, you want to make sure that your IBM Cloud account is active. If you have less than 30 days remaining, you need to obtain and apply the new code. Oh, this is important. Do not enter your credit card number and do not upgrade your cloud account, right? So do not submit any tickets unless the TA tells you to do so. Uh, do not deactivate your IBM Cloud account. So you want to complete the chatbot self-assessment first because you need to be familiar with the terminology. Then the chatbot walkthrough includes required ungraded exercises. You have to do them because the next, well, when exercise asks, asks you to create a note perhaps, right? And the next page you're using that note, so you cannot skip an exercise. You have to go through the whole file in order. So for assignment four, you go going to develop a chat, but it must be something, your original work. And uh, you want to pay attention, close attention to assignment deliverables, right? So how many people on this call cannot count until two? Well, just kidding. You need to submit two files. Your paper will not be graded if the JSON file is meeting, okay? So two files. First file is your actual paper itself. And the second file is a JSON file, okay? Now, remember that there is no recycle bin. The deletion cannot be undone, okay? Unless you export the JSON file for your, for your chatbot, then you can import it again, okay? And uh, uh, the, this is a nice quote. The only mistake you can make is not asking for help, okay? So just keep that in mind. And that is good. I see questions, a lot of questions. Okay. When will ungraded answers will be available? Okay, George, excellent questions. I'll make them available. How about next week-ish, right? All right. So first, because I want everybody to do the ungraded exercise, I don't want anybody just to look at the answer key, right? Well, I want you to look at the answer key, but I want you to do that first. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to discuss the application. And here is an application. I just made it up. Uh, this is going to be the Mr. BMI chatbot application. So the user has several options. He or she may use this to estimate the BMI based on height in inches. So I'm making this assumption here. The height is going to be in inches and the weight is going to be in pounds. So instead of doing the web search and uh, trying to log in to do the computations, uh, you can just go in and you can enter your uh, readings, right? You can enter your height and weight and get the BMI right away. Uh, unless the blood pressure, blood pressure readings require medical attention, you don't need to contact the doctor. You just get your information right away. And it's a 24-7 availability. The service is free. It is confidential. Right, and the answers are consistent. For example, suppose that I enter 115 over 75, it's gonna tell me that my blood pressure is normal. And if Lunesh enters the same blood pressure, he also gets the same response, that it's normal. So here are three doctors working in our office. I have a Mr. Monitor who works between, between uh, 12 a.m. and 11 a.m. And this is a Miss Sessoscope, right? And this is her hours. And this is Mr. BMI hours. So, uh, I want my chatbot to have a different greeting message, different message depending on what time uh, you're using the chatbot, right? So that's the first main, that's the first thing that's gonna happen. The doctor on duty will welcome you and then you will see this menu, right? And you can select from the menu options. Well, I guess it might help to show you a big picture. So that way, oops, that way you're gonna know what, what we are, uh, looking at, all right, so I'm gonna look at the big picture and I'll show you how to create this assistance shortly, but to make sure that everybody has an idea of what I'm talking about, okay, so here it is. 
uh, okay. Well, what's going on here is that, uh, well, I have to update the link because when you insert the picture, it's a link to a picture on the web, okay? Just, just, just assume that there is a picture here. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is an option. How will I help you? And then I pick what I want to do, right? So here is a list of options. I have several options here. I can type in what I want to do, or I can select from the options. And for example, I can say, what is BMI? And as soon as I do that, the chatbot displays an explanation, right? Or I can select another option, which is I want to estimate my BMI and the chatbot is asking, what is my height in inches? And my height is about 60 inches and I weigh about 115 pounds. And now it's telling me that my BMI is 22, healthy, healthy weight, right? Something, something along this line, right? This is what you can do with your uh, chatbot. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to slides. I told you, I gave an example, uh, right? So unfortunately I have to update the link to the image, but basically this is what's gonna happen. A user select, for example, I can select estimate BMI and the application is going to ask me to enter. And again, I can put the number as a number or I can type in, I can spell the number or I can say something like I'm 65 inches tall and it's going to pick up number 65 and I can enter the whole sentence. It's going to pick up this number. And then uh, application is going to uh, calculate my BMI and it will say if I uh, fall in the hand, in a health range or if I need to do something, right? Okay, and this is a blood pressure scenario. Uh, it's gonna ask me to enter the systolic and diastolic blood pressure and based on, based on that, it's gonna tell me uh, if uh, I need to do something, if I'm too high, if my blood pressure is too high or too low, if I'm in, in, my, in the normal range or if, it's, if I'm going through the crisis, I have to go in and see the emergency. So if your high reading goes above 180, then you have to see emergency. Or if the low reading goes uh, above 120, you have to see an emergency. And this is a low range, right? When you have to go see an emergency. And when this is the case, well, your chatbot is gonna exit, right? Well, it's programmed to exit, okay? So this is what's gonna happen when uh, you select uh, this is, this is an explained scenarios, right? When I want my chatbot to explain what's my BMI and what's my uh, blood pressure, right? What is blood pressure? This is an uh, estimate scenario. So what I did here and when, well, there is another option. I can, I can ask my chatbot to email me the information. So if I do that, the information will be sent to me, right? So basically I type in the email and the chatbot is gonna pick up if the, if the email is valid. And if the email is valid, I'm gonna get a response that the email will be sent to me. And this is a goodbye message based on the time when I'm running the chatbot. If I'm running it during the weekend, when I exit, it's gonna type have a nice weekend. Otherwise, it's gonna be a different message. It's gonna say, for example, thank you for using the, the IBMI application, have a nice, and here comes the day of the week. If I was running it on Monday, it's supposed to show me the Monday. If I'm running it on Tuesday, it's supposed to show me the Tuesday, right? So here, this is what you need to do. You have to do this picture like this, the flow diagram. Uh, very important, your chatbot has to have an access scenario. So anytime I should be able to quit, right? Uh, by either selecting exit from the main menu, or I should be able to, at any time, well, it's asking me the question, right? If it's asking me to enter my height, perhaps I should be able to quit if I don't like something in the application, right? So one way to quit is that, uh, suppose that it asked me the question and I got the wrong, I've got the unacceptable answer five times in a row, then I should be able to exit, it should exit, right? Or I should be able to explicitly say exit, right? Things like that. So whenever, whenever your chatbot that you submit is assessed, it will be checked to make sure that you can exit. Because if, if the tester of your chatbot is unable to exit, then this is a big problem, okay? So in here, 
This is basically called the scale. So the interface slightly changed. So as you're working on a walkthrough, keep, keep in mind that, that the interface has been having an ongoing changes. <laughs> so if I go in here, this is what you will, uh, this is what you will see. You will launch the conversation tool, right? And I'm going to close out here. Jesus, you have several screens. You have a home screen and you have a skills of skill screen. What you actually build is called the, the skill and you can have up to five skills in a, in the same service, right? So this one, this is a skill that we're going over today. And every skill has intents, entities and a dialogue. Intent is what is what I want to do, right? For example, I can I want to uh, examine my blood pressure. I want to check my body mass index, or I want the chatbot to email me. I want the chatbot to explain, and I want to exit, right? So those are the intents that I want to happen. But entity sort of like qualifies. Like for example, I want to explain. Explain what? What's a BMI? Explain me what uh, blood pressure is, right? So this is going to be my entity. Entity is a qualification. Like I want to explain. Explain what? Explain the topic, right? I want an explanation on the topic. And when I click on the topic, this is going to be the values. Blood pressure, right? Explain what the body mass index is. And here are the synonyms. Synonyms is a different way to phrase the same concept. Like BMI, it's a body mass index, body fat percentage, uh, way to height ratio. You know, there are different ways to uh, phrase the same con concepts. And uh, I can specify the different entity types. Here I specify the synonyms. In this case, in this case, email. This is a pattern because I want to read the email from the user in input. So I'm looking for this regular expression and I got it in a documentation. Your friend here is a documentation. Uh, you can have one pattern or more than one because sometimes when you try to match the phone number in a input, you have the international phone number and you have the US phone number, right? So you have different expression matching. And I got this from the documentation again, All right? So this is a component. And then here we've got the dialogue and the dialogue is the actual structure of the conversation, conversation node. So when you log in, when you actually start, when you create a brand new dialogue, you have a welcome note. This, this welcome note indicates the start of the conversation. And then there is an anything, oops, anything else note. This node is basically gets executed when nothing else is triggered above it, right? So here, basically, when the dialogue starts, right, each time it's going to check the node entry condition. Welcome condition means that the, the conversation just started. So when the, 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 when the welcome con, uh, condition is recognized, it's going to go in uh, into this here. It's going to go into here. And then here, this is called the conditional responses. So what I had to do is I had to customize the node and I had to enable multiple responses, right? I had to enable the multiple responses. So basically, <laughs> this is what I want to do. If now is after, Remember, this is a military time. So 17 is a military. So right now, if it's after the uh, 5 p.m., right? Now returns the current time. Now after 5 p.m., I want to show the text and an image. And let me go to the settings here. So this is a text response, and this is an image response. I want to show this picture, right? If now after 5 p.m., one. Apparently, this is a link to the picture. And when the URL changes, I have to keep on the URL. And here, this is a text response. But sometimes when a different a person launches a chatbot at the same time, this is called the response variation, right? So you want your chatbot to have about three or five 
paraphrasing of the uh, of the message, right? That's what you want to have, at least in the in the parent node, right? So here it is. You have three responses, right? And the response that triggered depends on a uh, uh, on the time of the day. So here, well, since the picture that I was showing you was gone, see, this is an image, right? And when I click on the image, when I click on the image, go back here, that should show me, oh, not found, anyhow. Well, I'll have to update the URLs, okay? I'll have to update the URLs, because yesterday it was working, but today it's not. So basically what's happening is that the images, image location moves, image location moves, so I have to keep that in mind. And whenever this image location changes, I have to go in and update it here. So see this? It's gonna show me not found because, oh, here it is, see this? Well, this is what I did. This is my Miss Cessoscope. I have to pick up this link and I have to put this link here. So whenever the time matches based on this condition, this image is gonna be displayed in the greetings, right? Well, then here, well, finally means what to do next, right? Well, next I want to jump to the main menu. But what is main menu? Main menu is a sub node in here. Main menu is a sub node in here. Well, okay. Well, this is what I'm doing here. I'm as this is a variable, and I'm grabbing the current date. I'm grabbing the current day of the week, right? Oh, uh, this is uh, this is a function, right? This will grab the current uh, date of the week. So right now, and this is a day, right? And it will store in a variable called day. After that, it's going to show you the response. And the response is, well, how may I help you? And here, the response type is a menu. See this? Okay. So here, this is a text. And this shows me the intent that will be triggered. So clicking on this button is the same thing as entering this in the keyboard, right? Well, this is the intent. Every node has an entry condition. See this? BMI is an intent. And here, over here, this node gets triggered when you type in BMI or when you select BMI from the menu. See this? Now, what is this? Blood pressure. Blood pressure is an intent, right? And whenever this intent is recognized in the conversation, this node is triggered. Let me see what the question is. Oops, chat. Oops. Anyhow. Okay, so the question is, where do we access the documentation? Okay. Well, I'll show you where the documentation is. Remind me to show you, okay? Well, there is a big documentation for this service. I'll show you where it is. Okay, just remind me if I forget. But let's see. He, see this? Well, this is an option, right? And what do we do here? After this menu is displayed, we want to wait for a user input. And when the user enters what they want to do, it will trigger any of these nodes, right? So suppose that I type in email me, okay? Well, there is an intent called email me. I want this to be emailed, right? Uh, so, well, this email me is recognized, right? Then in the user input, this, this is called the slot. This is called the slot. Well, I ask you guys to do the uh, walkthrough for a good reason, because in the walkthrough, I'm introducing the slot terminology, right? Uh, so, well, slots allow users to collect the input, right? So here, I want to force the user to enter the email. If the email, until the email is recognized in the user input, I'm gonna keep on asking please enter your email. And this is a variable. There is now, there is a two way to do it. You can do it by editing the JSON code, code the way it's showing in the walkthrough to track the user's name. I'm actually editing the JSON code. 
Or you can do this, set, set the context, right? You can set the context. But look, I can open the JSON editor and I can show you what this is. This one, this is creating a variable and here this is reading the input. Well, see this literal, it means that I want to grab, I want to grab whatever was entered in the input and I want to store it in the context variable, right? Because if I do this, see this thing here, try it out, right? Well, see this, this is a trial out. Oh, look at this, right now the image worked, which is good. See this? It says, good evening, I'm Mr. BMI calculator, okay? What do you want to do? And I'm going to say, I want to email me the information. Well, basically this is what the slot is. It's attempting to read my input and I'm gonna say X. Well, it's gonna ask me to enter the email address again because it did not recognize my email. So now when I put this, I put my email, right? And now, now it's gonna tell me this, see this? I'm gonna do this. It tells me, sent you, the information was sent to your email. Now let's see what's happening behind the scene. I go here, manage the context. So I have this time zone, right? And this is the day of the week, do you remember it? In a, in a welcome note, I was grabbing the day of the week and storing it in a variable. And here, my another variable is email. Well, this is how you want to do it. Well, whenever your uh, application, whenever you get in the output, which is not what you want, this is one way to debug. You want to check what the context variable is. You want to execute your chatbot one node at a time and check it, right? So now, see this, if I look at the email, me, what does it happen in here? After this is displayed, I want to get control back to the main menu. See this? After this, after that, here it says what to do. I want to jump to, I want to display the main menu again. So I'm going back, right? I'm in the main menu. Now, okay, I selected something from the main menu. Uh, I want to estimate my BMI watch. What, what's gonna happen now? Okay. Uh, it's, it's recognizing the BMI intent, right? So it's gonna trigger this node in here. In this node in here, I got two slots. So here, this is required. I want to do this. I want to uh, enter my BMI, right? What is your height in inches? Okay, but suppose that I don't understand what it's talking about. What is heck is BMI? So watch, I can put explain here, right? I can put explain. What this is gonna do is this. It put an explanation, right? And then it's asking me again, what went to your height in inches? And I'm gonna put 60 right now, right? Okay, well, it picked it up. Now, it's asking me, how many, how many pounds do I weigh? I can say I weigh 115, watch. What is it gonna do now? It picked up 115. What is this? This is an entity, but this is a system entity, right? This, this is a pre-built entity, number that I'm using. In this application, I use number entity and I also use the dates, right? because I'm pulling the day of the week, right? So now if I go in here, manage context variables, take a look at this. Now I have the height and now I have the weight, right? It stored what I entered. But let's see here. Uh, it's looping through this until I enter something that is recognized, right? But let, let's see what else in here. This is called the handler. At any time, I should be able to exit, right? When I, when I type goodbye in the middle of this conversation here, I will exit the application. Whenever I type in explain in here, it's going to explain what BMI is, right? But then let me click on it in more detail. I click here, see this customizer handler, and it's gonna tell me what to do next, right? 
Well, here, this is what I do. I, uh, this is how to force this to continue. This is how to force. I put the height and value minus one. So that way it knows that I have not provided the value. And it's going to, well, this is, this is a dummy, this is a dummy variable, right? This is, this is a dummy variable. And it's gonna, and it's gonna return to the response. This is here. Well, the reason I set it to minus one, and you'll see it. I'll show you how I do the conditional response because it's going to pick up that if these two guys here are set to, my, set to minus one, then I'm not going to do any calculation of the BMI, right? I'm not going to do any calculation if these two guys are set to minus one. It's a dummy value. I'll show you. But here, if I want to exit, I go back to response of this node. I don't go back to the goodbye node immediately. I go to the response, right? And I'll show you why. Okay, here, I'm collecting the data. This piece right here, well, this is my response, right? So, this is what I want to do here. Uh, this one, this one here, it's going to check if, uh, oops, here, this conditional response is checking, uh, so if this is uh, between uh, one, 18.5 and zero, right? If this is between 18.5 and zero, uh, you might be underweight. So here, this, this, this is a bot response, right? The bot response depends on a value. Uh, here, this is the syntax for calculating, for using the number in the calculation, right? Remember, Wait, what, what is the weight? This is a variable. To access the variable, you have to put a dollar sign. And I'm doing the calculation. Uh, this one, I just found it on the web. So you have to take the weight, then you multiply it by 703. Then you divide it by the height squared. So that's how you get the body mass index. And if this is be between these two numbers, well, the person, the person is underweight, right? So this is what it's doing in here. Now what, what it also is doing, this is, this is a response, right? Now I keep on going, going, and here, anything else, right? <laughs> this, well, if, the, if this is, uh, if I want to exit, right, it's gonna go into the anything else, and finally, it's gonna wait for the input, right? So uh, here, well, let's go back here. <laughs> In this case, I specified, I specified my, uh, see this, this is a BMI. The BMI is 22. So I, basically it fall under one of these, right? It fall under one of these branches, right? So that's basically where it is. Okay, I'm here. Well, healthy weight. Uh, what does it do is that I specify the variations of the response because I don't want to see the same uh, message over and over. Uh, if Linesh was going to run the application, uh, he might get this response, something like this, right? Uh, but uh, it will take, if, if he's gonna enter the same uh, height, right? In the same way, it's gonna be, it's gonna enter the same branch of the chatbot. Okay, and here, well, it's gonna wait for the response, right? Uh, oh no, wait, this is the finally part, sorry. Oops, let me, let me close this out and then let me see what it's doing. Close this out, estimate BMI. <laughs> okay, here it is. Okay, this is what I'm doing. After this, I'm going to show the menu and this is a slightly different menu. And the reason is, I don't want to ask the user to estimate the BMI again if this is we just come from. If this is we just come from. I do not want to estimate BMI again. But, well, if you want to challenge yourself, this is something that I have not done. Well, this is advanced. There might be a way to somehow track where you're coming from, right? There might be a way to do that. I have not done it yet, but if you want to beat me, 
go ahead. If you have time, if you want to beat me, go ahead. Well, okay, now, take a look at this. It's gonna show, it's supposed to show this menu, right? Okay, and then it's gonna ask again, what do you want to do? Right? Or, ultimately, I can type my response. Right? Here, this is a testing window. If I click on clear, well, it's gonna start the conversation again. Okay? Now what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna show you more. Uh, well, I, what, what we'll do is, I'll give you this code, right? And I'll let you play around with this more at your leisure, but I've got the blood pressure readings the same way in here, right? Well, it's asking me for the diastolic and for the systolic blood pressure. And here, the condition, the next action is going to be based on what the answer is. If somebody is, well, in serious, serious danger, then I should be able to quit my application. If a person is in danger, I want to quit my application. I want to quit my application, okay? Well, and this one, this is a required slot. And uh, if this is not found, then I want to keep on prompting for to enter to enter this thing here, to enter this, right? I want I want you to keep on asking, enter this number, right? I want to ask and keep and enter this uh, response until I got the satisfactory answer until the answer matches the number okay now here is a goodbye note right nothing interesting in here well you just exit right you just exit and it shows you the message uh right so now what is this let me show you this is a folder i added the folder the folder allows let's you group the related notes and here i want this go to the folder when my explain intent is recognized. Whenever I type in explain, it should go into this folder. But in this folder, I've got two notes. Explain what the BMI is, right? So here, well, this node is triggered when, when uh, it recognizes the intent explain, and also it recognizes the entity topic value BMI. And this one is triggered when it's recognizing the blood pressure, right? Okay, so this is a blood pressure. Uh, and uh, what it will do is, uh, well, well, this will, uh, this is a finalist. The last condition, I wanted to go back to the main menu. After this thing is displayed, right? If this message is displayed, it should go back to the main menu. But uh, this is one reason I want you to start working on this early. Whenever you make a change, you must test the whole chatbot. Trust me, whenever you make a single change, you have to, you must test the whole chatbot to make sure that it, everything that was working before, it's still working, okay? And anything else not gets picked up when it does not pick up everything above this, right? Whenever everything above this is not picked up, it's gonna go into anything else not. Okay, now I'm going to show you the reason why you have to, you must develop your chatbot earlier. Because, take a look at this. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna create a virtual assistant. And this piece is not in the walkthrough because walkthrough starts the basics, right? I wanted to save it for this presentation. Watch what you're gonna do. Well, this is assistance. You're gonna do this. You're gonna create assistant. And let me just type it demo, right? And here you're gonna enter your description. Well, you have to put a description in general. It's optional, but you have to do it for yourself, right? And make sure that this is checked because the preview link is a link that you're gonna send to your friends who are gonna participate in this. Well, this is the only assignment in this grad school when you let your members, you let your family members and your friend to participate in a part of it. There is a portion when, you, when you're gonna involve, and you can also ask TAs to be your participants. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create an assistant and I'm going to add a skill. Well, but the thing is, I have to add, I have to add the uh, scissors, I click add dialogue skill. I'm gonna see the warning right now and this is okay. Well, the reason I see the warning is because I already have five skills. So I have to click here, I'm gonna add existing skills and I just want to add, I'm just, just as an example. 
right? Our medium the scale. And what, what this will do is uh, it will create the virtual assistant. It will create the administrator assistant and virtual assistant. And when I do this, this is a preview link. Well, this is a link that you're gonna send to your family members. This is a link that you're gonna send to your family members. Remember that, right? Well, or any participant, and then you're gonna click on save changes, right? Well, if you don't, if you don't remember, if you don't remember what the link is, not a problem. What you will do is this: you're gonna click here, right? You're gonna click here, and you're gonna go to preview link, and this is the link that you're going to send your family members, okay? Well, they're going to put this in the chatbot. And again, not sure what's happening with the image. I'll have to check it. Oh, it could also be the browser because when I try it in another browser, maybe, 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 maybe it will work in another browser. Who knows? It could be the browser. No, anyhow, anyway. Uh, well, I would have to check it. Okay, let's do this. Before I send you this code, the JSON file for this chatbot, I'm going to fix the image, okay? Well, okay, now let's go back. Well, I tested the chatbot, but the thing is, I was testing it at a different time of the day. So I want you guys, when you receive the JSON file, I want you to test this chatbot in the different part of the day. So this is what your uh, family members, your volunteers are gonna do. On the day one, they will run a chatbot like this. Then what you will do on your end, well, this is very important. You have to do something every day. So, well, your, your, your volunteers, your participants are done. Once your participants are done, you're gonna do this. You're gonna go to the skills and you're gonna go to the skills. Well, in this case, it's a Mr. BMI Health Center. Do you see this analytic stop? You have to go to analytics stop. Uh, and well, here I have past two weeks selected, but in your case, in your case, it's just going to be today, right? This is going to be your case. And well, well, this is a summary conversation. It's gonna show me how many conversations my volunteers, my participants ran today. And here, this is the average number of messages per conversation. Uh, this is a number of uh, conversation, right? I guess this is a number of conversations per person, perhaps. Okay, and here are the plots. It's showing me, in this case, it's gonna show me by hour, right? Uh, so, this, this is what I want, we want you to do. We want you to take, at the end of the first day, go ahead and take the screenshots. At the end of the first day, I'm repeating again, take the screenshots because you need this. And also note what your top intents are. Now, what else I want you to do is we go in and check the actual conversations. And when I click on the link here, well, see here, it showed me that my intent explain was recognized in the conversation twice. I have to click here and it's gonna show me two conversations. It's gonna show me two conversations when the intent was hit. I'm gonna click on the open conversation and it's gonna show me the details of the conversations with the board, right? So here it is. And I'm gonna click on the show classification. Okay, well, here, it, well, well, this is a board, right? It showed me the image and it showed me greetings of Mr. Monitor. How will I help you? Okay. And this is the response from the user. Uh, the user either entered the BMI, okay, or user entered the explain BMI. This is what was triggered, Jesus. I enter explain BMI, and this is my classification. Uh, it showed me, it, it identified the intent explain and the entity BMI. If intent was, if intent was identified incorrectly, this is what you would do this. You would click here and you can change the classification. See this? You can change another intent. If my intent was identified incorrectly, right? I can change this intent. This is how you train the board, okay? You can either pick existing, keep existing intent, 
or you can just keep on a, you can select another intent. This is how you train, and this is what you're gonna do. You're going to train your bot. Basically, what what users enter, you you can make the classification adjustments. Okay. Oh well, you want to take notes of what you're adjusting because you have to explain it in a paper. In your paper, you must explain what you adjusted. And see this? I'm gonna show this classification. Well, it recognizes that number sixty. And what is number 60? 60 is a system entity and 60 is a value, right? And I can, I can show this uh, classifications, right? And here I can always change the classification of my entity if I have to, right? So you need to explain what you actually did, right? You have to explain, uh, you have to look at your conversations and uh, discuss. So let me X out from here. You also can access this user conversations. And I want to break down, I wanted to break down some of the conversations. Okay. Okay. When we send the link to our friends, do we tell them what to say? Ha 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 this is a, this is an excellent question. When, when you send the conversation, well, you explain what your chatbot does, but the whole point here is that uh, when they phrase the same uh, statement, they're gonna word it different, right? So the whole point is for them to, uh, based on the introduction message, you want to make sure that your volunteers understand the chatbot purpose, right? And uh, the intended they type, they may word differently, that's the whole point. So when I say BMI, Linesh might say the same thing as body mass index, and uh, Professor Garcho may say something different, right? Like a height to weight ratio, something like that. So uh, that's the whole point. Uh, each participant may word the same concept differently. Uh, like, can you explain? Or uh, Denise might say, uh, can you clarify? Or someone else may say, well, something different, right? Like Teresa might say, could you elaborate on this, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, so, well, this is, or I can type in the number uh, 60, I can enter a number or can, I can type, right? Here, so basically here you get to see which nodes, which nodes get hit the most, right? Here, well, well, this is a number of conversations, average length of the conversation. You're gonna take the screen prints, you're gonna check the classifications, you're gonna make any adjustments at the end of the first day. And also if you had to make any adjustments as the chatbot itself, you have to write that down. Now, at the end, you want to take the, you want to take the both days. You want to make sure that it shows two days. Well, in my case, it showed in April 15th to April 16th. You want to, uh, you may need to adjust this date range here. Your final, your paper has to show two, two days and you want to show the data for both days, right? Uh, well, here, active users, well, I don't know why. Well, it's because nobody volunteered. I no, no, you want to uh, clarify that in minimum two days, right? I mean, it could be even yes. more than two days. You could, yeah, okay. you could. At least two days, at least. But if you screenshot, if you, a uh, screenshot of your data does not show two days, it means you did not meet the part of the assignment requirement. Yes, you can you can do it for more than two days, of course, but you have to write it down what you did, right? Yeah. So basically, this is, well, this is a system entity. This is a number. Well, well this is recognized in a input, user input. Uh, but in order to use the system entities, you have to turn them on explicitly. Uh, here are my system entities. What I have to do is I have to turn them on. I'm using the dates, I'm using the number, and also the time, right? <laughs> well, because I'm checking the time of the day, you have to turn them on, right? Uh, well, you might be wondering what version is. Unfortunately, this piece here, it's not available for the light version, it's not available. Okay, well, this part is not available either for us. 
uh, well, that thing here, well, if you're building an application on any of those topics, you can reuse some of the intents, but that does not apply to us, okay? Do not import the intents that you're not going to use because it could create a lot of confusion. It could create a lot of confusion, okay? Uh, when you do this, you want to do it slowly. Well, well, that's the reason you have to start early because one mistake could mess up the whole thing. Now, let me show you something, how you do it to, to submit for the grading. You have to do this, watch. I'm going here and I'm going to say download JSON. Download JSON, okay? And then I'm gonna go to here, save us, save us. And it will just save the file with JSON expansion, extension to whatever your download folder is, right? And you just save it here. Yep, so that's gonna be your JSON file. Well, this is a file that you're going to submit, okay? This file, it's not the file that you read in the text, but no, 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 no. But what, what the instructor will do is, well, I won't be able to do that right now because I already have five in this uh, skill sync. But what instructor will do is, uh, instructor will do create skill. <laughs> well, I cannot do it now, but what the instructor will do, it will click on create skill and it will import the, the JSON file. Okay. <laughs> well, you, 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 you are allowed to have only one only one, uh, sorry, only one copy of the service. I have some from last semester. At that time, you could add more than one, but uh, not, not right now, now you cannot. But I'm just trying to see what the instructor will do. And I'm trying to find one where I don't have, uh, I, I can go ahead and delete this one, right? Watch, when you want, want to delete it, it's gonna ask you to confirm the deletion. Oops, I'm gonna type delete, delete, right? I want to show you what the instructor will do. <laughs> okay, here it is. Now, well, well, take a look at this. This is what your instructor will do with the file that you submit. It will do this, she will do this, create skills. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do import skill, right? Then I'm, sh she's gonna do this, choose JSON file. And then she's gonna go to the uh, downloads folder, the folder where she saved it from your assignment, and she's gonna find it. And uh, oops, I'm gonna I have to type something like the BMI, right? It contains BMI, <coughs> BMI. So this is a JSON file. I'm going to do this import, <coughs> and I'm gonna do this thing here. Well, I want to import everything and it's gonna be import, okay? Okay, there we go. Well, this is what your instructor will do to grade the work. And then you, the instructor will go to the dialogue and uh, she's gonna look, look at your paper and she will test this thing in a try it out in parallel, right? Well, because, well, well if, if in your paper, in your paper, if you say something like, I have a note that gets triggered by email me, right? So instru the instructor will read the paper and also will check if your board has email me note, right? And how it's done. Uh, she, she will check the application of the concepts in your board, right? Well, this is what will be used, okay? Uh, another thing is, well, you saw that little message, it said training. Well, that's what expected. Uh, this is what you'll also do. In the meantime, if you want to make copies of your work, well, if you're afraid that you're gonna make change and mess something up, you can export the JSON file. You can all, always export this JSON file, right? And I'm gonna do download JSON, okay? And you can export this always, okay? Well, and then if you mess something up, you can import the file back, right? So now I'm going to, well, I like to check the slides because, well, I want to make sure that I did not miss anything important. And here I put the comparison. 
uh, difference between uh, entities and system entities. Just keep in mind that system entities are built in that are not editable. You cannot edit. Well, you cannot you cannot just add them and delete. You have to just turn them on. And the name starts with SYS. This is a reserved entity name. You cannot create your own entities and start with SYS. Uh, well, this one, uh, this is showing you how to add entities. Because I did not do it here. The reason I did not show it now, because this is part of your walkthrough, okay? You have to do it in your walkthrough. And if you have not had a chance to do this walkthrough, I want you to go back here after you do the walkthrough. I want you to go back to the slides and I want you to check this again, okay? Well, here I just spelled it out, more details on how to build the dialogue, right? You have a welcome note and you have anything else note. And see, one reason I have the slide is because, uh, well, as a backup, if the service coincidentally goes uh, on a unplanned emergency maintenance during the demo, I have a backup plan. I can, I have slides, <laughs> okay? Well, this is what I want you to do. If you're working on this, you want to take screenshots as you go, because that way you have something to write about. Do not wait until the last minute to take screenshots, <laughs> okay? Well, what I did for you is I, I outlined, I outlined here what's going on inside the notes. So whenever you get this, import the JSON file and take a look at it. But I need you, I need you to do the, the walkthrough first because this is more advanced, okay? Your walkthrough is a beginner level. This is more intermediate and advanced, okay? So, well, this one I'm showing you how it's implemented. And again, I want you to go back to this. After you do the walkthrough, go back, right? And watch this again, okay? Watch this recording again. Well, here, well, it just outlines how I did the group, group by. And here, this is, this is a folder, it's a nicer way to group notes. Perhaps all of these notes are explanation on a certain topic because the folder can be expanded and collapsed and I can add something to the folder that's applicable to the whole group of notes, things like that. And as you're working on this, your, uh, this, this is your best friend, try it out. You want, you want to uh, play around and test your chatbot as you go, right? And I just put the details for you. And was, can we get the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Yes, you'll get the PowerPoint presentation and you also get the JSON file for the chatbot that I, I'm showing you. Well, this is what to look for in the announcement. They're going to be, uh, whenever we get the recording, right? We never know it's ready. You will see the recording and you will see the slides in the attachment. And you also see another attachment with the JSON file for the chatbot. Okay? Okay? So here, this is just, I'm spell, I just spelled out some scenarios for you, okay? The large flow chart you showed in the beginning, well, well, I, well, okay, George, ex excellent question. To do this uh, uh, flow chart, you have several options here. You may use Visio, okay? Or you may use Draw.io. Draw.io is free, and you may say, well, uh, work your work to the cloud but uh since you're your UMUC student you may get you get a free license for the microsoft uh visual it's available for you as free as a student well if you want the details i can uh show you later but as a student you may get a free copy one free installation of the microsoft office 2019 and also the free installation of the of the uh, Visio 2019, so do you get this, right? Did you did you mean um, the the chart or the flow that you saw yes, in the dialogue chart. section? Maybe it's the dialogue section flow chart. No, 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 no this one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Did you mean? Did you mean this one? No, the, this one. Are you talking about this one? <laughs> well, because he said in the beginning. The oh yeah. Okay. Was it was this one. Okay. Yes, this one. Yes. Well, okay. Well, to do this one, you can use Draw IO or you can use the uh, Visio. As a student, you get one free installation, 
okay? And as a faculty, we can install one, also we can install student version for free as a faculty. We get one installation and uh, it's free on one, on one PC, okay? And you save your license code. You're given a code and you have to save the code in case you have to reinstall it later. If you have to rebuild, you have to re redo your PC, so to speak, right? Re reformat the hard drive, then you use the same code to reinstall, but only one PC, okay? Uh, so I spelled that out here for you, everything. Oh, there is a difference between the interface. Uh, it's a location where the analyze tab is available. Now you have to go to the skills, okay? The current interface, uh, you, you, you saw that, right, in the demo? Uh, well, this is uh, here, <laughs> Mr. Chatbot. Right, it's in here. An analytics now here. It was moved. So your uh, the slides. I believe the slides were updated. Right. Yes. Okay. Now let's go back. Well, yes. The question was about that flowchart. That flowchart that I showed in the beginning of the demonstration. Okay. Well, this one I'm just showing you how to do the virtual assistant because. Uh, and here is a link, a link like that, you're gonna send to your participants. Well, and again, you, the TAs can participate also. Uh, in theory, the more participants you get, the higher benefit is to you, okay? And, uh, well, here, I'm just explaining that you have to have, uh, you have to allow yourself two to three days and ask each member to run several conversations per day. And then second day you, exp you repeat the experiment and you have to well, discuss, for instance, what are the changes to your tab uh, intents and so on. What adjustments did you make? Did the adjustments help? Things like that. <laughs> well, and this is what to look for. I just put some of the screenshots. I did not take screenshots of everything, but I just wanted to help you get started, right? And you want to look at the user conversations details. Like, like what is a, uh, what got recognized? What is the classification? They didn't recognize it correctly. or did they need to change it? Well, this is like that, okay? <laughs> and, and again, you need to start early, okay? Start early, it's a key. Uh, just remind him to show where you can get, oh, excellent. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for the reminder where we can get the documentation. Okay, well, let me let me get to here. Uh, well, let me look at this, the home page. Well, well, there are links to documentation in here. If I scroll down, there's other videos. And here I can click on open docs. Yes, I can click on open docs. Well, well, this is one way. And it's taking me to the documentation page. Well, well, see this. This one is a uh, how to. Well, this is an about the skills. <laughs> okay, here this is about the assistance. <laughs> this is more details. Well, well, see this. I can click on create assistant, and uh, here it's going to take me to the different links, right? different sample applications and different video tutorials. And uh, this is creating the skills. <laughs> well, here how to create and search the skills. Uh, using the catalog, creating an intent. Well, here is a creating the dialogue. <laughs> well, <laughs> and well, there is a there is a page on a uh, uh, dates also, because if you if you go through these pages, these pages have link to more in depth, uh, more in depth documentation here, right? Like see this if you can click on the system entities, it will take you more. It will take you to how to do, how to enable the system entities, right? More more details right so uh creating well versions is not for the light version but 
In general, it just shows you how to do this. And then you go to this, here are some tutorials that you might like to. Well, this one is a card dashboard dialog. And uh, in the course content, you see little uh, little picture of the car dashboard. Basically, it's about person driving the car and you have the entity called turn on, or intent called turn on rather, sorry. So intent is turn on, but entity is turn on what? Lights, turn on air conditioning, turn on the radio, and so on, right? So this is the entity, it clarifies what to turn on, right? So you want to look at that too. Uh, well, well, this is important because slots allow you to collect in the data. So you have to study this too. Oh, this is a good one. Oops, no, no, not this. Expressions, expressions for accessing objects. So here, this is how to read the context variables and how to, how to do this. Uh, well, this is creating a variable called the, the credit card, right? And it's setting it to the uh, visa. Here, this is showing you the how to access the uh, intents, right? Oh, and this is not, this is catching if intent is not help. If intent does not help, then do this, okay? Uh, there should be the whole section on a date also, if you keep on going. Oh, this is very interesting. If you want, if you want to dig in, for instance, you want to recognize, recognize this intent, execute this node if the confidence match is above certain value, okay? This is something to look into if you want to go beyond. You can use the uh, confidence right, to check, you want to look at the confidence as of March sometimes, but you have to go, if you want to go beyond, okay, do we have a number, okay, this is an excellent question, How, what is the number of, mi minimum number of entities, <laughs> it depends, there is no explicit requirement on the number of entities, but you have to have system entities, right, you have to have entity user defined, one with values and one with pattern. You have to use patterns too. Okay, well, for for the system entities, uh, you can use location, you can use the dates, you can use the numbers, right? But, uh, well, well, if you have to, if you want to go more in depth, you can you can your ch try the arrays. Like for example, if I if I was ordering pizza, right? And I give you a list of toppings. Perhaps you could do specify more than one topping, right? There's something to look into if you want to go beyond. Okay, and if you want to beat me, something that I have not done it yet, right? Oh, see this? Like if I click here, it's gonna show me, it's gonna take me more in depth to the string methods because there are more on the string methods and there are also date methods. Uh oh, well, okay. If, if, the, if you get this page not found, it's because, uh, well, there was some reshaping of the pages and things get moved, right? So you basically, could, you could just search. You could search the application. You could search the, rather the, the documentation, right? See this, you expand this. It's gonna show you more on how to do this. Uh, and uh, well, I, saw, I saw the whole thing on the dates. And, uh, and this one, I, I think you should read this one. Improving your skills, you have to read about the metric overview. Well, this tells you more about what the screen shows because for your homework assignment, for your rather uh, assignment, you have to interpret what the numbers mean, but this actually shows you what is in there, right? So you have to uh, you have to apply it, okay? You have you have to know how to explain well these graphs and what you can learn from conversation and uh, statistics, right? Top entities, top intents, so that you're gonna know how uh, users are using your board. So that's one reason we're asking your 
volunteers to test because you want to see what they're doing, how they're understanding what is doing, right? learning from interactions. And this is more on the advanced. Well, we are not deploying it, but it, um, the assign, assignment is asking you, suppose that you were going to actually deploy it outside of this application, right? What would you choose? You just explain it. That one you don't have to do. You just have to, uh, it's just a theoretical question, just a theory. Where would you put it and why? Yep. So, uh, well, let's see <laughs> expressions. Here it is. Well, well, so you have to, you have to use this. You have to look at this because uh, here it's just showing you how to read the how how to uh, read the input and output, right? And if you want to, you can check the arrays if you want to go beyond and figure something out. Then you've got details on date and time, on the numbers, and the strings, etc. See this? So you can explore it uh, because because you want to look at something that a uh, little more than beyond than the walkthrough, right? Well, first, first you do the minimum and make a backup, but then try to do a little bit here. Yeah. So, well, this is a documentation pages that you could, you have to look at this. And I want to tell thank you to Kniz, I believe, right? I want to tell you thank you for reminding me to show the documentation because this is very important. It's all about reading the documentations. You look at these examples and you apply it to your chatbot, okay? And also there are some links to samples. Well, samples are good to look at, but do not turn in the sample for grading. You want to create your own application. It could be something related to your hobby or anything like that, right? For example, somebody could like the fitness or somebody likes to do the sales, right? Or it could be something that answers questions about something. Like uh, one of your uh, schoolmates did something on the admission to your museum where, well, uh, people would ask uh, what the documents do they need to submit, what programs do we offer, things like that, okay? Well, well, you need to uh, start thinking about your topic tonight, okay? But first you need to do the walkthrough and then watch this recording again. Yes, you want to watch this recording again. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I say what I mean, okay? You need to watch this recording again you have to start working on your assignments. It's important because you need to set aside uh, several days to collect your conversation data because collecting the conversation data, it's a, it's a key. This assignment is fun, but it's a fun not at the expense of not doing the work. It's a lot of work. It's very laborious, so to speak. It takes time because, well, once you start developing your chatbot, you will see how much time it takes, okay? You will see it once you start working on it because it took me a long time to create this one, the BMI. And I kept on adding and adding to it, okay? This took me a long time because the first time I did the demo, it was not that elaborate. It was much simpler than that, okay? And then I received the questions, how do you add this, how do you add that? And I kept on adding to it, so yeah. Okay, so let's see if we have questions. Because if you do not have questions, I will have questions. It will be a pop-up quiz. Oh, oh. <laughs> questions? Yep, let me go and check my chat here. Uh, other users identify in the analytics, can the same person tested? Yes, 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 yes. That's right, Denise. Well, in fact, you want the same person probably to test it for a couple of days. Yes. Well, well, absolutely. And then you you tell us what the person tells you. If that person runs the same input on the second day, see how the difference is, right? Did the response uh, 
the, the user got improved, that the accuracy got improved, something like that. But you need to just explain what was done in the whole experiment. But this is a nice opportunity to involve your friends, your family members. This is the only assignment and the only part of the assignment. But it's fun, but not at the expense of doing the hard work, okay? It's a lot of work. Trust me, it's a lot of work. I've done it, right? I built two chatbots, two or three, three maybe, okay? So, I've done it. And I'm telling you, and also Linesh will concur how much work the students had to put in in the past semesters to get a good grade. And good grade means B or A, okay? Linesh, do you agree what I said? Linesh? Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. This takes a lot of time, but it's very exciting, guys, as that we were just talking earlier before the um, before the webinar started. You know, this is something kind of real, right? You could you could see something really functioning, working, uh, where you you invite your family, your friends to kind of take a look at what you've developed. So this is the most exciting piece, and the more time you spend on it, you can make it even more and more exciting. After you know, people go through your you know, your chatbot and you find out what things you can improve. You can look at the documentation to, you know, add any bells and whistles, which is going to get you a good grade. And at the same time, you're going to enjoy it. Trust me. Yep. And also the part that requires discussing integration with our services. This is just a theoretical. You don't have to implement the integration. Okay. Uh, are the users identified in, uh, okay. How long will the links be active after this semester. Well, well, the link you create will be active for as long as you have your service. Well, you get, you can, uh, well, if you have your student email, right, you want to make sure that your IBM Cloud account does not expire. Then you want to uh, keep applying the new promo code, okay? Your link will be active, but what also may happen is that it keeps the conversation log for a certain time. The conversation log uh, that happened like two months ago may not be available, but uh, you, should, you should be able to have the link. Yeah. Well, if, but the thing is, if you have not used, if you have not accessed the service for a certain number of time, it might be deleted. It might be deactivated. I'm not sure about the details, but yeah, uh, just curious, did students use the chatbot as part of other, of their comp stone? Uh, that's an excellent question, George. I'm not sure if they used it as part of the comp stone. Okay, let me address this. Yeah. Um, the capstone project is a um, complete project which must um, have the main component of everything studied in the program. So chatbot can be a small, small project of the whole, of the whole big project, which is analytical project with predictive analytic part. And maybe for some very applied stuff like customer satisfaction, you want in addition to be the chatbot. But chatbot itself as a whole project is not a project in the capstone, uh, the way the project is defined it must have much more component than just building a chatbot. Chatbot is just a portion. Yeah. Well, but in general, students use the, the uh, IBM Cloud account itself. They use it for the Spark, for the R, you know. Oh, yes, that, yes. Yeah. But that is for yeah. the machine learning part of the uh, Capstone project. They do use the cloud with all machine learning part of Spark. Um, Mm -hmm. Whatever you studied in the program, yes. Yeah, yeah because basically uh, you have our contact information. If you, well, basically what you do is before this class ends, well, you after this class ends, you have access to the classroom for about four months, right? Uh, make sure that you download the instructions to keep your IBM client account active because if you have a student email, you should be able to obtain your promo code. and. Uh, pay attention to when it's when the promo code expires, okay? And you want to apply the new code before it. 
because depending on how many days elapsed after the expiration, it might be difficult to reactivate your account. Because once the, 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 the code expires, your account becomes inactive. And depending on for how long the account was inactive, it could be hard to get it reinstated, okay? And you might lose the data. So please, please make sure that you're active. Pay close attention to that. Yeah. And also, I just wanted to thank you all for attending this demo, as well as the last demo that we had. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of hard work. Okay, I don't see more questions, so I'm going to stop the recording. Mm -hmm. And... Maybe you should stop sharing first oh, because yeah, I, 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 I can do it different. Don't worry. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So basically, when I get when we get the recording, we'll upload the link and the.